All righty. Well, like I said, I'm C. Brown. I'm the uh, extension and research entomologist for field crops in Louisiana. And I'm going to go over some soybean insects today. So hopefully you all learn something. It's a picture of soybeans. So I'm sure you all knows what the, know what those look like. All right. So we're going to start on stink bugs. Stink bugs is the most damaging suite of insects or guild of insects that we have in the state of Louisiana. You've got more species diversity and stink bugs than we do pretty much in anything else in this crop. So knowing how to identify these are going to be important. So this is the green stink bug. We typically don't have too many greens. We see more southern greens, but green is one that you're going to see. The control methods for these two are going to be roughly the same. The threshold is going to be the same. It's just it's a different species. And so really the easy way to tell is you're going to look at these antennal segments. They're going to be different colored. There's different numbers of antennal segments that have different coloration on them. But what's the, the easiest way to really tell is going to be the nymphs. So the nymphs are going to be orange to yellow to black. They're going to have striations on them. And this is what the nymphs are going to look like. And a lot of times during the year, you're going to find a mix of both. You're going to see the greens and the southern greens. And these are the egg masses that you'll find as well. They're laid in clumps and they're going to often be, have some kind of weird, them and typically southern greens have kind of a geometric pattern to them as they lay their eggs. This is a southern green. You can see that the antennal segments are a little different. The coloration on the nymphs are going to be different. So whereas the green stink bug has got orange and yellow and black, the southern green is going to be pink and white and green and a few other different colors. Now, I typically don't like to use coloration as a way to identify insects, but with you guys, it's going to need to be quick and dirty, and these typically, these colorations typically aren't going to let you down, especially with these insects. And so you can see this is an adult female laying an egg mass. You see it makes a nice, what is that, a pentagon, hexagon? That's a six side. So they're going to, if you see egg masses in the field and they make these geometric shapes, and there's probably anywhere from 50 to 60 of them, it's going to be a southern green egg mass more than likely. And these are going to be the insects that we see outside of red bandage. We find these, at least in my experience, we experience these the most. And so when you guys find greens, you know, a lot of times it's going to be southern greens. The green stink bugs themselves are actually physically larger than southern greens, but not by much. But the really, the diagnostic way to tell, flip them over and look on the, the sternal side. So, and you're going to have the southern green, you kind of have a half moon. The green stink bug, you're going to have a half moon with almost kind of a nipple on it. And so, flip them over. That's really the easiest, most distinctive way to tell if you need to know. All right, getting into brown stink bugs. So, browns are going to be pretty distinctive because they're brown. And so, this is the Eushista service. Uh, the immature is going to be green with basically these brown segments on, uh, on the dorsal side. And so these are going to be egg masses and then the immatures. And so you're going to see a lot of times after a fresh egg hatch, the immatures are going to congregate on the eggs. Immatures actually feed on the chorion. That's what we call the eggs. So entomologists have to have crazy terms for just egg mass. So, but we use the chorion is what makes up the egg. And so when you see a fresh hatch, what they're going to do is they're going to sit on top of these eggs and they're going to actually eat them. And that gives them protein, fats, lipids, so they can hit a molt and then they're going to molt into the, the second instar, and then they're going to disperse and start feeding. And so typically that's why you see them congregating on eggs. But this guy is going to be a meaty stink bug. The Eushista service, he's going to be fairly large. He doesn't have very pointy shoulders. They're more rounded. And, you know, they're going to be, you're going to, I imagine you guys are going to see plenty of these this year as well. And so the immatures, they don't, there's not many other stink bug species that appear similar to this uh, as far as immature wise. And so when you see something that looks like this, it's going to be a brown. This is quadrator. Quadrator's got the pointy shoulders. So if you actually catch a quadrator and you pinch it, it's going to stab you. And so, you know, these are really an easy one. When you pick it up and you grab them by the shoulders, it's going to poke you. It's probably going to hurt. And so these are going to be a little bit smaller than your service. And so, but the egg masses are going to be very similar. The nymphs appear somewhat similar, but they're more characteristically, have darker green, have more uh, defined segments, especially around the outsides and on the, the back. And so, you know, realistically, we kind of treat these about the same as we do with greens. A lot of the times they're lumped together. And so control methods for these are going to be roughly the same as we do for some other ones. Now, the brown stink bugs are becoming pyrethroid resistant. 
And so we're going to have to start using acephate, a lot of other insecticides to, to start to control these guys. So it's important when you guys start catching these to tell, you, you know, to tell who you're scouting for because we're starting to see some resistance issues with these browns. So correct identification is very important. All right, the rice stink bug. I don't see these too much in fields, in soybean fields, with the exception of fields that have real bad barnyard grass. And so these guys are grass feeders. If you scout rice, you're gonna see these, become very intimately familiar with them. And so they're gonna be the longest stink bug that you're gonna see. They're very long and skinny. The nymphs resemble that long and skinny, uh, skinny insect as an adult. And the immatures are red. They're strikingly red. And so they're really, it's a, it's, <clears throat> It's not a hard stink bug to really misidentify. And the egg masses for rice stink bugs are very long and longitudinal. So that's, if you see this type of egg mass on a soybean leaf, you know, it's gonna be a rice stink bug. And more than likely, they're there because there's grass in the field or near it. They're not gonna be exclusively, exclusive legume feeders like a lot of our other species are, and maybe even uh, feed on anything other than rice. All right, the red-shouldered stink bug. A lot of people get this one confused with a red-banded. If you call a red-banded a red-shouldered, it's wrong. Let's say the red-banded is not the red-shouldered. We actually have a red-shouldered stink bug. It's Thianta custodder. And it's got similar markings to red-bandeds, but it is not a red-banded. These are kind of rare for us, and they don't do even remotely close to the amount of damage a red-banded can do. These are the immatures that kind of look like a model, it, they're very modeled. And the way that I help, you know, some of my kids remember them is if you go, I don't know, I was, <clears throat> I was a fat kid growing up and so still kind of haven't changed that persona yet. It looks like that, that model dessert that you used to get at the mall, that's how you can remember them. So if it helps my student workers remember them, that's how they remember. So you kind of use the way that I was taught as an entomologist and the way I train, you know, the guys that work for me, the gals that work for me, is that it makes something that you can remember it by. And so if it's, if it's something dumb, but it helps you remember, use it. And so, but if you look, this stink bug actually has red shoulders. So it actually physically will have a red shoulder. Whereas red bandits do not really have a red shoulder. They have a red band across the back. So where your shoulder blades would be in relation to where that stink bug is, so if you think about on yourself, you know, it's gonna have a red band that basically runs across your shoulders. And so it is the primary pest of soybeans in Louisiana. And so these are gonna be the ones that are most important. When you guys are scouting, it's gonna be, you know, the most accurate counts that you can make of these are gonna be extremely important because they by and far and away do the most damage that we have in Louisiana. This is the egg masses. So they're gonna be laid in two lines and they look like tipped over barrels. And so they're kind of leaning on themselves. And so they're gonna be dark in nature and you're gonna see them typically laid on pods and leaves. A lot of times when we start getting into R5, we start filling pods, they're gonna lay eggs directly on pods. When we're in the, the vegetative stages of beans, they're gonna lay it where we have no pods. They're laid on the leaves, sometimes they'll be on the stems. But the easiest way, and you don't have to have a magnifying glass to see this, to identify this insect, if you're ever in, if you're ever in question, there's a prosternal spine on the bottom side of this insect where its mouth parts, the proboscis, basically meet this spine. The immatures have it and the adults have it. So if you guys ever have any questions or concerns that may not be a red banded, that's the easiest way to do it. Flip him over, take a look. Immatures are gonna look, you're gonna have alternating red and black. They still have kind of a faint red band on the back as well. You're not gonna have very many immatures in the state that resemble red banded. So when you see one and you guys get familiar with them, they're very easy to identify. All right, some kind of unusual insects, Adessa bifida and Proxius punctulatus. So this is gonna be the, what's called the morning glory stink bug. Uh, we had a f issues with these a few years ago in corn. Every year, depending on the year, we'll see big populations in certain areas. I can't tell you why. And it made their baby not a morning glory patch around. So it's just some years they decide to show up. This other one, this Proxius punctulatus, I've only seen a couple of these a year. They're gonna be more incidental stink bugs. They're not high. They're, unless they're in large numbers, they're not gonna be really of economic importance, but it's important to know, you know that it is a stink bug and they do feed on soybeans. All right, so beneficial versus phytophagous. So you will encounter beneficial stink bugs in the field. And so, and they're gonna resemble browns. And they're not, 
and not every stink bug is bad. So we have predatory stink bugs. And the easiest way to tell a predatory stink bug is by looking at the proboscis. The proboscis on the predators are gonna be thick. So the way I like to characterize it is, you take a McDonald's straw that you normally drink a soft drink out of, it's gonna be the, the predator's mouth parts or their proboscis. A coffee straw is gonna be the phytophagus. And so how thin and small and narrow, the ones that feed on the beans are gonna have that thin, narrow mouth part. The one that feeds on other insects are gonna have the big meaty ones. And the phytophagus insects actually, excuse me, the predatory stink bugs will, will bite you. And so uh, this rough stink bug is extremely big. I mean, this is probably gonna be the biggest stink bug you're gonna see in the field. I mean, we're talking, I've seen some that are almost two inches long. And so when you catch one, you're gonna definitely remember it. This guy's a beneficial and they're called rough because the shoulders are rough and they're just big and ugly and meaty. And so, and if you flip him over, if he bites you, he's gonna do some pretty serious damage. But you can flip him over and you can see just the really large proboscis that these guys possess. This is spine soldier bug. You're much more likely to encounter these guys than you are the rough stink bug. Spine soldier bugs are very prolific in our soybean fields, but they resemble a brown stink bug. They're similar in size to some of our brown species. And so, you know, you guys need to make sure that when you catch, when you're sweeping, don't count this stink bug as one of the ones that's, that's economically important. And really, if you guys have a question, flip him over. That's the best way. If you can't, you know, because he's got, he's got sharp shoulders uh, like our quadrator stink bug. And so he kind of resembles some of the other immature stink bugs that we have. But you can see how big his mouth parts are right here and even as a nymph right there. And so that's going to be the definitive way to tell that he's a predatory stink bug. And so you don't want to count them uh, against your browns because these are good. You want to have them in the field. And you can see this one here feeding on a bullworm actually in beans. All right, so moving into worms, soybean looper. So you guys are gonna, outside of stink bugs, you guys are gonna have to deal with worms and, and soybeans. Soybean looper are gonna be more or less inch worms. They loop, so they're gonna walk, they're gonna loop as they move. But to identify a soybean looper, you're gonna use the pro legs. So these guys have two pro legs. You don't count the set of anal pro legs at the back, you count the set right here. So these guys have two pro legs. So one, or two sets, one, two. The velvet, or excuse me, green clover worm has got three sets. You don't count the anal pro legs, you have one, two, three. And then green clover worms, as well as velvet peens, I've seen them both. I know guys, you know, I've seen them. Soybean loopers are very calm and docile. When you can let them crawl across your hands, they don't do anything. I've seen velvet beans and green clover worms go nuts when you touch them. And so they're gonna go, they're gonna, they're gonna be very spastic. And they use that as a defense mechanism to get away. So velvet beans, four pro legs. So one, two, three, four. And this little field ID to common caterpillars and corn earworm, Tyler showed y'all some corn earworms. I'm not sure if, I think I have, I think I have pictures in this slide, so. Uh, they're gonna have four plus one pair of pro legs. Green clover worm is three plus one. Soybean looper, two plus one and the velvet bean is four plus one. The plus one is they're counting the anal pro legs. I don't count them. You automatically throw those out and um, you know you count the one, two, three, four. And then on velvet beans, they said they're very active when handled. Uh, green clover worm, you know, I've seen them be very active and they also will bite. So I've been bitten by both. So. Fall army worm, that nice four dots here on the, the tail end and you have the inverted Y uh, with a mottled brown head capsule, that's going to be really the easiest way to tell. The inverted Y is going to be one of the best ways to tell, uh, along with your dots on the back. Uh, this is just some, as this slide said, I showed just more injury. This is injury in corn. I know we didn't really go over corn much, but why stink bugs are important. You know, you can get buffalo ears and you can also get, um, you can also see a lot of stink bug damage in mat fully mature corn ears. So if you guys are looking at corn and you're seeing stink bugs, you need to let your, let your scouts know or let your bosses know. This is some of the, there's some serious injury that can occur from stink bugs in corn. Okay, so stink bug feeding. So what does stink bug feeding do? And why I, got, why I present this to y'all is that it's really important for you to take your, and I'm not saying y'all don't take your job seriously, 
but getting your counts accurate, especially when it comes to counting stink bugs, is going to be very important because this is just an example of some of the injury that stink bugs can do. And so this is in different pods. And you see that some of these, this bean was completely upside, it, it rotted in the inside of the pod. This bean never formed. This has got some serious uh, deformation and a lot of damage to it. And you've got a lot of injury here that's directly caused by stink bugs. Now weather will exacerbate some of this injury, but stink bugs have to cause it first. It causes a mechanical wound in the bean pod that moisture is allowed to get in and causes a lot of rot and some other issues that you know you guys as uh, bosses are gonna you know have to deal with. So this is what three stink bugs for 25 sweeps looks like. So I mean our threshold is four. So I mean that's not bad. You got a little bit of purple stain. Uh, you have a little bit of damage. Not terrible. There's some stink bug damage there. So I mean overall those aren't bad. They're not terrible looking beans. That's 12 per 25 sweeps. So it's important, especially that when you guys are trying to, Im trying to ID immatures, that you get these counts right. Because that's not a whole lot, of, that's not a big difference between three and 12. I mean, you're looking at nine stink bugs per 25 sweeps. With red bandits, that doesn't take long at all. That may take a day or two for them to build up the numbers like that. So you can't, you know, the guys, y'all's bosses, the guys, the growers that are paying, the consultants to scout the field that have you guys scouting for them, you can't sell those beans. So it's, that's why you know, I harp on this every time I, I teach this course. It's a very important to correctly identify what stink bug species that you're finding because red bandits can easily do this to a soybean crop. And, so, and the immatures can't fly. So when, the, when they hatch, they, you know, the immatures, they have, don't have the ability to fly yet. They've got nowhere to go but that soybean field and the only thing they're gonna feed on is beans. All right, some newer insects. These have been found in Louisiana, but this is the kudzu bug. If you see anything that's ugly, stinks, you know, just needs, you don't know what it is, bring it out and we'll identify it. It's important to know because we have invasive species that can come into Louisiana. We need to know where they are and what they're doing. And so the kudzu bug is one. Now these have been primarily limited to close to the Delta parishes, but we do need to know if they're spreading across the state. So if you see one, you know, please you catch it in a sweep net, let them know, and so we can mark it. We have a, a map where we track where all these, these insects are. So this is in relation to a dime. So they're not very big. They're going to be the small. You, we have no stink bugs that size. And so it's, the, it's a platospid, bean platospid. So we do, you know, we do have them in Louisiana. They have been confirmed. And if you guys are seeing them, please let your boss know so we can get a handle on them. And then another one is the brown marmorated stink bug. So brown marmorated is invasive out of Asia. So is the kudzu bug. This insect has more potential to cause us harm in Louisiana than the kudzu bug because this insect is very phytophagous. And by phytophagous means it feeds on a diverse number of plants. So uh, brown marmorated will feed on apples. They'll feed on any kind of fruit, satsumas, tomatoes, along with feeding on cotton, corn, soybeans, rice, grain sorghum, they don't discriminate. They will feed on everything. And so that's why it's really important. If you guys catch a brown stink bug that you don't know what it is, don't just toss it out of your net. Throw it in a Coke bottle, put it in your shirt pocket. That's why I like wearing shirts with pockets. I throw bugs in them all year long. I know it's kind of weird, but you know, it's good. If you got a top pocket, you can throw a bug in there and bring it out. And so, you know, the easiest way to look is look at white bands on dark antenna. If you catch something that's got white bands on dark antenna and it's got the distinct black and white pattern on the abdomen, bring it out. And so I know this looks similar to our, our uh, predatory stink bug, the spine soldier bug, but it doesn't have quite the spine shoulders. They've got a smooth shoulder on it and they're gonna be about that same size. So just keep that in mind. And with that, that's all I've got. Thank you.